So authenticated encryption is one of the success stories of cryptography in creating a dialogue between theory and practice. Um, and it's characterized by repeated interaction among academia, industry, and standards bodies. And in fact, you can see already in the 90s, you have these uh, technologies coming out, you know, web, SSL, GSM, where they're trying to combine encryption algorithms, authenticity algorithms, to somehow achieve security with, of course, varying degrees of success. Um, this is what then inspired Valare and Amprempre in 2000 to identify and isolate this goal of authenticated encryption, which I've described at the top of the slide, uh, which is, of course, the symmetric key goal of achieving confidentiality and authenticity simultaneously. Then, uh, following the work of Bellari and Namprempre, there were various back and forths between academia and the industry, in particular standards bodies. Uh, immediately following, there is this so-called first wave of authenticated encryption algorithms, dedicated authenticated encryption algorithms, which are able to add authenticity at very minimal cost over the basic encryption algorithms. I've listed three of them up here, IPM, XCBC, and OCB. However, these algorithms also came with patents. And uh, these patents is what made you know, standards organizations like NIST perhaps a bit uncomfortable. Um, and when they were looking for new modes of operations, uh, they looked more towards others which had come in response, uh, kind of a second wave of authent dedicated authenticated encryption algorithms, uh, which were then patent free. These algorithms, in particular GCM, were then adopted into many different standards. Uh, so I already mentioned uh, G, um, NIST recommended GCM. They also recommended CCM. Um, then in 2004, you also get GCM in IEEE 802.11. And in 2008, you get GCM in TLS 1.2. So GCM starts to spread in all, all these standards. And by 2013, what do you see? Well, it's Hardly deployed, actually, in fact, in TLS. Um, There's usually just RC4 uh, being used for the encryption over there. But then, after a lot of work by researchers, a lot of attacks, and uh, in fact, you want to see related stories, see the SHA-1 collision presentation being given later on, crypto. Um, after a lot of work, you're finally able to convince people to start using algorithms other than RC4. and 2017, more than 70% uh, you see deployed, uh, GCM deployed. But still, you can see it takes about, took about roughly 10 years to see widespread deployment of GCM after its uh, creation. Um, and there are all kinds of reasons for that. You know, there's migration costs, effort, there's, you know, why should you switch if, if it works? If there are no attacks, then why should we switch algorithms? And you know, maybe the already deployed algorithms have been optimized so far that uh, the new algorithms might not be able to compete as well. Although in GCM, a lot of work has been placed into improving that. So then that naturally leads to the question, well then, what are we going to do with you know, all these new different settings that have been discovered in the past few years in authenticated encryption in academia? I've just listed. A few over here, you know, okay, anonymous misuse resistance, robust authenticated encryption, security under variable, variable stretch, online schemes, release of unverified plain text, multi-user security, and just, just a few of them, I'm missing others. Then and there's a whole bunch of schemes coming out with the CSER competition, which is supposed to end December of this year. Uh, so, I mean, from uh, past experience, it seems like it might, even, it might take 10 years, maybe even longer, if at all, if these schemes get deployed. Uh, so, so you're kind of thinking, so then what's the point? But there have been situations, there have been uh, you know, results which have, have actually been able to make it faster to practice, or at least try to. Uh, so for example, um, they try to exploit already deployed algorithms as much as possible. Here I've already listed one sponge wrap, which tries to, uh, which converts SHA-3 into an authenticated encryption algorithm with kind of the idea that if SHA-3 is deployed, then you can easily get authenticated encryption immediately. Uh, then there's also this TLS 1.3 non-randomization. This was 
introduced during the discussions of uh, TLS 1.3. Um, in order to, I mean, there were concerns on multi-user attacks, basically attacks that are possible once you deploy algorithms very widely. And this nonce randomization is a very simple modification. Uh, you just, it allows you to use the authenticated encryption algorithm still as a black box, but you change, you randomize one of the inputs, and this is supposed to add uh, some, some extra security to, this, uh, to these, against these multi-user attacks. Uh, which was then, you know, formally analyzed by Bellari and Tuckman last year at Crypto. And then another example is GCMSIV, which is published at CCS. Um, what they do over there is they exploit all these improvements that have gone into making GCM as efficient as possible on these Intel architectures. And they say, okay, but GCM itself is fragile. Can we get something better out of it? And still using just basic GCM components, but rearranging them, they create GCM SIV, which, is, uh, which basically addresses this non-fragility issue in GCM, but still is able to take advantage of uh, all the progress that's been made on GCM itself. So then the research we question we kind of, well, at least our motivation for our research was, you know, given all this long deployment time um, and the fact that there are all these new settings, how do we, you know, squeeze as much as we can of, out of the currently deployed algorithms? And how can we get these new settings faster out into practice? So what we focused on is two settings, okay? We just kind of roughly, we looked at non smith resistance, originally formalized by, uh, Rogway and Shrimpton, Eurocrypt 2006, and also its release of unverified plain text setting. And uh, this is roughly like the rest of the talk. It's just one part and then second part. So starting with this non misuse resistance, uh, we actually uh, kind of isolate this different property that you can achieve, which we call non misuse resilience. And uh, just to give a brief background for those who aren't familiar, what is non misuse resistance? Well, okay, you've got an authenticated encryption algorithm over here. You've got a sender and a receiver. Sender and the receiver share a, share a secret. And whenever the sender wants to send a message, it takes a message, sends it through the authenticated encryption algorithm to, receive, to get a ciphertext, sends that over the receiver, who then decrypts it and either gets the original message or an error symbol. And in order to be able to achieve security, this authenticated encryption algorithm needs to be stateful or randomized or somehow. And the way that this is usually formalized is via an additional input. Okay, so the authenticated encryption algorithm is usually deterministic and stateless, that's how they're defined. And then there's this additional nonce input which gets attached to the message, and that will then get processed um, into the ciphertext. The nonce is still attached to the ciphertext and sent like that to the decryption algorithm. And the catch is that this nonce itself, it either needs to be, it either needs to be random or it needs to be some unique value, kind of capturing this state or randomness. And what happens in nonce misuse settings? Well, the nonce is then no longer unique. It's for some reason it's repeated due to some errors. And uh, then the question of course is, you know, what kind of security can you get in that kind of setting? So most conventional schemes, they have these uh, nonce misusing attacks, they lose all security. So you get OCB, GCM, you get confidentiality breaks, you get authenticity breaks. And uh, as a solution, so Rogaway and Shrimpton, they came up with SIV. Uh, then there was GCM SIV that I mentioned. These provide so-called best possible security when you have these non misusing attacks. Um, and then you can ask yourself the question, well, okay, this is a nice idea, but are there actually non, can you do non misusing attacks out in the wild, out in practice? And, you know, kind of guided by Adam Langley's statement, the internet is vast and filled with bugs. bugs. This book at all, they did uh, perform an internet-wide search, search for TLS servers, and 
tried to see what they were doing with their nonces, basically. And they found three different settings. They found one in which the nonce was generated randomly. Okay, that means that you wouldn't really see a repeat, but if you collected enough data, you might see one. Um, there's a second setting is in which the servers uh, repeated the nonce once and then actually continued to correctly update the nonce each time. And then in the third setting, of course, uh, the nonce was never changed. Uh, so for this last one, there's, you know, there's nothing you can do. The best you can hope for is that maybe they're using one of these nonce misuse resistant uh, algorithms, and that's it. But then uh, these first two settings, and uh, what, what basically, what can really go wrong in practice? What, can a, what kind of attacks can you actually mount against algorithms in which the nonce is repeated, might be repeated randomly, or uh, repeat once? So to kind of look at this question, let's take three algorithms. Take GCM, OCB, and ChaCha20 plus Poly 1305. All three algorithms are insecure in the nonce misuse uh, setting, but all three behave very differently when you look at attacks. So GCM, there is Zhu's forbidden attack. It's been talked about already quite a while. And the moment you repeat one nonce, you can actually do a key recovery, partial key recovery, and all authenticity is lost for every single nonce. However, confidentiality, you do lose confidentiality for those nonces which are repeated. In fact, you can retrieve the XOR of the plain text of the nonces that are repeated. But it's only for those nonces that are repeated. You can't, you can't figure out, you can't recover the encryption key and you can't figure out um, plain text for other nonces. Or get any information about plain text encrypted under, under other nonces. OCB, in contrast, you get intermediate key leaked, all security is lost, regardless of confidenti confidentiality and authenticity for all nonces. This is an attack that we describe in the paper. And then Charger 20 Poly 1305, this actually is an interesting algorithm. It was, as far as I can tell, it was first introduced via an RFC, uh, and not from academia, but uh, from settings uh, without ASNI. Um, and it actually learns from this kind of, uh, from this attack over here, from Zhu's attack, and they modify GCM's design. The design is pretty much the same as GCM, except for one little change. Um, it's still insecure in the nonce misuse setting, However, this Jew's attack is much more restricted, much more limited. So then, you know, are designs like Cha Cha 20 plus Poly 305, are they sufficient for most practical settings? And can we kind of formalize and describe exactly what advantage does Cha Cha 20 plus Poly 305 give over the other two? And this is why we uh, looked at this setting, this nonce misuse resilience which describes an algorithm's ability to recover from security after a nonce is repeated. So this is exactly to address those, uh, kind of understand what happens in those settings in which uh, you might not have, uh, you know, the nonce repeated all the time. So using this, then using this formalization that we come up with, you're then able to distinguish between the three algorithms and actually formally justify that Cha Cha 20 plus Poly 13.5 actually improves over GCM and OCB. Uh, so just to kind of briefly go over the, uh, what these definitions look like, what the formalization looks like, this is a traditional definition, the conventional definition of confidentiality. You've got a distinguisher or an adversary over here, which interacts with one of two worlds, either real world or ideal world. In the real world, it's interacting, of course, with the algorithm uh, with a particular key and can input the nonce and the message. And in the ideal world, it's interacting with the random, uniform random function uh, with still nonce and message as input. In the conventional definition, the adversary may not repeat the nonces. That's just a restriction that's placed on the adversary. And in the nonce misuse resistant setting, there is absolutely no restriction on the adversary. So what, how do you then formalize nonce misuse resilience? Well, you introduce an additional oracle that the adversary interacts with. Uh, so now the adversary interacts with still the encryption algorithm, 
and still the random function over here. And um, with these algorithms, it may not repeat nonces. It needs to be nonce respecting, just like in the conventional definition. But then we also give it access to another kind of attacker oracle, where it can then perform all its nonce misuse, uh, non misuse attacks, do whatever it wants to study about the algorithm under whichever nonce, with the only restriction being that it can't, any nonce that it queried here, it cannot use over here. Okay? Uh, so this, this kind of idea of adding additional oracle comes from Barwell et al., subtle AE, um, where they call this, these two oracles the challenge oracles and these two the honest oracles. So then just briefly, you know, okay, comparing nonce misuse resilience to resistance. Uh, so resilience, of course, you still leak a significant amount of information when a nonce is repeated. It's just all it says is that the damage is limited. If you want proper security, then you want nonce misuse resistance where only equality of plaintext are leaked during nonce repeats. However, the advantage with resilience, there's already a widely deployed algorithm available. Whereas nonce misuse resistance, I'm not 100% sure about this, but I believe there haven't been any deployed algorithms, but I could be wrong, maybe key wrap or something. And then another advantage of resilience is that you can very easily construct a GCM variant um, which achieves this, okay? You could see Minamatsu and Iwata at ESC 2015, uh, they talk about this kind of compos composition. So that's the first part where we looked at nonce misuse resistance. Then the second setting that we looked at uh, was release of unverified plaintext and our new construction which uh, achieves it, GCM rub. So, okay, again, briefly, background, release of unverified plaintext. A lot of authenticated encryption algorithms that are out there, uh, they, you can roughly categorize them in two different categories. This has nothing to do with generic composition. It's just that the, the way that the algorithms uh, are designed. So they either, when they decrypt, they either decrypt and then verify, or they verify and then decrypt. So decrypt and verify, meaning they take the ciphertext, compute a plaintext based on the ciphertext, and then verify uh, using the plaintext. And then in verify, then decrypt, they take the ciphertext and tag, they verify that already, and then only compute the plain text if necessary. So OCB, for example, is an example of the left-hand side. GCM is an example of the right-hand side. Although, as you'll see in a few slides, there's nothing about GCM that forces you to perform the operation like this. So, okay, what are... So what are some settings that might happen? So if looking back over here, for example, these decrypt and verify algorithms, you're actually, before verification has completed, you're actually um, computing sensitive information over here, so information that you want hidden. And a lot, a lot of times in practice, this is, might be infeasible to hide that information. You might have side channels, there might be implementation limitations, you might have insufficient secure memory to store the entire length of the plain text, uh, and there might be implementation bugs, where for some reason the algorithm, due to an optimization, decides to release the plain text without having completely completed the verification. Uh, so to give you a an example of the latter, here's GCM, okay? So just to kind of walk you through this, the main components of GCM You've got this counter mode over here, which is the encryption algorithm. And then over here, this is authentication, okay? So the way GCM works is it takes the plain text, takes a nonce, plugs it into counter mode, and then encrypts like that. That gives you the cipher text. And then this nonce is then used, is sent through a block cipher. The cipher text is processed through universal hash of here to compute the tag. Now, during decryption, so this is, this is why I call it, uh, so this is actually kind of an encrypt and then you verify. I mean, sorry, encrypt and then authenticate. Uh, so that means that technically decryption would be you first take the ciphertext, send it through here, you take the nonce and you verify, and then you are allowed to decrypt. 
However, these two operations can actually work completely in parallel. So you can imagine a fully optimized uh, version of GCM in which uh, you know, one process runs the verification using the nonce and the ciphertext, and another process performs decryption using the ciphertext and the nonce in parallel. And maybe for some reason, the decryption, uh, the plain text is computed before the verification is completed. So that's why I say that GCM, there's actually nothing that forces you to perform the, uh, the verification before you've completed the decryption. So release of unverified plain text describes a setting in which authenticated decryption algorithms leak plain text regardless of whether verification occurs. And the type of solutions that we currently know of that achieve good security in this RUP setting are all kind of variable input, variable input length ciphers or wide block block ciphers. Um, so they often, these are very heavy constructions, they often require multiple passes, or you can get very dedicated constructions like AZ, very specialized, or perhaps not so easy to implement. Um, in particular, all these designs are very distant from deployed algorithms out there. And achieving release of unverified plaintext security seemingly requires a completely new approach. However, as you might guess from the theme of the talk, we say that we see that you can actually take GCM, apply some minor changes, and achieve RUP security. So at a high level, how do we do this? So this is just a, kind of an abstraction a little bit. Um, of our solution, what we do is we take the nonce and the plain text, and they're still used to compute the ciphertext, kind of like GCM does with counter mode. Uh, then this nonce is sent through, is going to be encrypted, basically. But it's going to be kind of encrypted with a tweak, which is the, a digest of the ciphertext. So you're going to process the entire ciphertext and combine it and encrypt the nonce, and now the encryption of the nonce will depend on the ciphertext. Then if you look, into, look at decryption, what happens if an adversary were to change you know, one bit in the ciphertext or try to manipulate anything? Well, then the, de the uh, decryption of the encrypted nonce would turn something completely random, and you would get garbage over here. So this solution, this then high-level solution, can be applied to GCM. Here I've indicated the three mod modifications that we introduced to GCM. So the nonce now, instead of being sent into this hash function call and then sent through the block cipher, we send it straight to the block cipher. The output of the universal hash X is XORed once before and once after the block cipher call, and a zero you know, constant string is padded before the plain text. Quickly. The features are that it's basically as efficient as GCM, takes advantage of all current GCM expertise. It's more robust than GCM because it achieves this uh, rub security. There's, of course, a trade-off. Claim absolutely no mis nonce misuse resistance, possibly resilience, and it's an interesting alternative to GCM as I And, okay, finally, there's also this, if you look in our paper in the appendix, there's this interesting application where you can use GCM rub to uh, provide a very efficient solution to prevent crypto tagging attacks in Tor, which are actually attacks on anonymity. So just have a look at the paper for the more details on that. So to summarize, our motivation, extract as much as possible out of tools that we already have. We looked at, we introduced non-smith use resilience and GCM rock construction. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>